Hey guys, it's Courtney Tezano and welcome to another ET Live. We are really excited today because we have a special guest who you all love on power as Angela, Miss Leela Lauren. Thank you for joining us oh my so God, much. Thank you for having me. Of course. So everyone is really excited. If you've seen last night's episode, then you have a lot of questions. So be sure to send those our way and I'll make sure we get Leela to answer those. And if you have not watched Power yet, you might not want to tune in just alert. now. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Come on back and uh, hopefully we answer those questions for you. So let's go ahead and dive right in because we have a lot of ground to cover. So the episode actually ends with Ghost, who is now questioning whether he uh, needs to, he wants to be a better man, but he shows up to your doorstep. So, I mean, that instantly made me think that uh, are Ghost and Angela going to be back on soon? I mean, we, you don't know yet. He's, he's, um, the thing with Happy Birthday is like Ghost has sort of been brought all the way down to rock bottom mm -hmm. and, you know, He's lost his daughter. He's lost the respect of his son. Tasha's in love with somebody else, you know, at this point. Right. And so Angela, like, yes, he loves Angela, but also we have to think of, like, they fell in love as kids. So exactly. there's that crazy history there. Mm -hmm. And so he's just, he knocks on her door because it's almost like he's, you know, a straggly Something puppy. Something that's familiar. Those, yeah, doesn't know where else to go. Right. I thought that and then I was thinking, could it be closure for him? Because when you want to become a better person, you kind of check things off your list. And um, sometimes Yeah, I think he's ready to get some stuff off his chest. Okay. Because she's asked him to be honest. Oh, and he's like, hasn't done it. He's lied yeah. to her over and over and over again. And so there's a little piece of he's just like, I want to be a better man. Like, I got to clean up some stuff. Right. So we're going to have some tough conversations with, yeah. with Angela and Ghost. Oh man, I can't wait. <laughs> I mean, we're starting off with some re really big, uh, big questions. But one of the biggest things tweeted about last night was Kendrick Lamar. I know, isn't he amazing? Acting he was so good. I mean, out of a rapper that has had an acting debut, I think his was one of the best, right? Well, and he really came, he had like prepared and he'd come and he'd come to play and like, God, I mean, sure he's had experience performing, but stepping into another character and being loose like that, like I don't think I could have pulled that off if I'd, I stopped for a really long time. <laughs> like, so I'm just, I'm a little, I'm a little in awe, you know, you're in awe of his music mm -hmm. and his, his, his use of words and his political commentary and his rap. And so then for him to come in and kill it, you're like, okay. Like, Is that even fair? It's not. I kind of hate him a little bit. <laughs> oh my God. No, he did amazing. He did do a great job. And he talked to uh, Courtney ahead of time on why this role was one that he wanted to take on. It's really nice that he didn't have the typical, um, you know, thug role and that we saw him as a drug, a drug addict. <laughs> right. But really like when you, okay, it's, there's this in like old literature and in like Shakespeare time, there's the role of the fool, like Puck, or there's these characters that are outside the margins and they get to tell the truth and they get to sort of put things in a different perspective. And that's, he's kind of like a seer. He's sort of like, sure, he's a drug dealer, but he has this sort of crackpot wisdom that yeah. comes out and it's a really fun departure for power. It, it was a really great debut. So we actually have him talking about it with Courtney and let's see why he took on this role. I want to be something that um, people will predict or know. I want to be something out of the ordinary, but something I connect to mm -hmm. at the same time. And yeah, um, a drug abuser, <laughs> <laughs> laces, a hothead, uh, um, a dude that's just ready to go, always on the tape. Uh -huh. And it's just a character that I know. I know so well, just growing up in Compton. And you know, you have relatives or you have dudes that are around the corner that you actually grow up with that's been in the neighborhood before you. I mean, he was literally perfect for this role because, I mean, he has that background growing up in Compton and it showed on screen, right? Well, and he does it with love, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I feel like now fans are wondering, is he going to be a recurring character? Because he did so great. Oh, my God. We would love that. <laughs> I kind of think he's got, you know, his, he's busy. He, yeah, he's a busy man. Exactly. Uh, well, that was one of the highlights of last night's episode. Another thing that we saw um, or that we've been seeing this season, you touched on it uh, in the very beginning, talking about the unlikely parents oh, this yeah. season. And yes, we got a chance to see you and uh, Tasha. Tom, yes, and then we saw a glimpse of me showing up with Tommy. Exactly. So what is in store as far as the journey with you and Tommy? Are you taking Teresi down together? I think, like, 
um, I don't know if, because Angela doesn't know Teresi. Mm -hmm. So this is like a thing where you as the audience member have informa more information than Angela. Angela's trying to take down the Jimenez that yeah. got, she got robbed of, you know? Mm -hmm. And so she's thinking she can use Tommy to do that because she thinks he's, she gets it wrong and thinks that he's uh, their distro. Exactly. So she's pairing up with him, you know, sort of like, uh, what, what was that term? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yes. So Tom, you know. So, Tom, Tom and um, Angela are coming together. And that's really fun. Yeah. I love working with Joseph Chikora. Yeah, what's that been, that been like? Because I know his character's so different from who he is as Tommy on camera. Oh, yeah, but when he's on set, man, it's like Tommy. It's just, <laughs> it's a lot of fun because we, I also, you get to play in this thing where you see their kind of high school versions of the way, like, Angela's not calm and collected around him because right. he scares her and he keeps showing up and her. I mean, she had that gun in her back pocket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Except, you know what's really funny about that? So, you know, nowadays we as women were always wearing those stretchy jeans and those can't support the weight of a real gun. So every time they would have me put a real gun back there, it would like fall down, like fall in down my pants. pants, in my pants. And so you'd have this like diaper butt gun thing situation happening. And so we're like, what do we do? We need something. And in Angela's apartment, there's a bowl of plastic fruit. I literally had a plastic banana back there. Stop. <laughs> The behind the, the scenes shoot. look Yeah, the power. behind the scenes is because, like, the gun, like, that, it, it's a fake set gun, but it's really heavy, and it just wasn't working, so, you know. <laughs> Who would have thought a banana would have saved the banana. Day? I think there was a blooper reel where I, like, literally take it out and point the banana at it. So. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. I love hearing that. Um, Tommy, obviously, is a little, um... He's a little amateur in, when it comes to this new father-son dynamic because he hasn't had a dad in so oh, long. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So He's I thirsty for it. He is so thirsty yeah, for it. Yeah, and who can blame a kid? You don't grow up yeah. with a parent, all of a sudden you find it exists. It opens up a hole in you. Exactly. But I feel like by episode five, we're fi finally seeing that he may be on to Teresi in some ways. Are you going to help him at all, like unknowingly help him um, figure out the motive of Teresi? That I can't like tease but like that's sort of that thing that um I don't know Angela never does she does very few things unless it kind of also helps her because mm -hmm. also the one time that she did something nice that landed her in hot water like like w helping telling <laughs> Tasha where Tariq was like that was the one generous kind moment human moment it and like blew up it just yeah no good face. deed goes unpunished so right. um the question is whether she doesn't know who he is. Like, Sax and uh, and Mock know who he is. And so it, the question is, like, she doesn't know who this informant is at right. all. So she has to figure that out, too. Okay. So it's going to be a journey, yeah. I assume. Yeah. Are there going to be any more odd pairings? Because I know we have you and Tommy now, but it seems like we may have something else on the horizon. Can we see that? I think that's going to continue. Okay. You know? I think it's going to continue throughout the season we have a question mm -hmm. from miss in i hope it's india india davis from youtube says did you want to play this role or did you have the option to be jamie's wife no as a as a actor you just they like they have like angela from jump was puerto rican mm -hmm. um and so that's sort of what they were going um and tasha they wanted like a very specific archetype mm -hmm. and um and then, like, did I want? I wanted to get a job because I was unemployed. <laughs> I, I wanted to not have to move in with my parents. No, everyone <laughs> does not want to do that. Yeah. If we can avoid it, <laughs> yeah, that's a really good one. Uh, now, one thing I notice is that every episode, it seems like Tommy is closer to death. How um, crazy would it be if Power did that this season? Are they going to do that to Power fans with the major character? I mean, once you kill a kid on the show and like I, I think um the genre of television has been so upended by like some of these great cable shows like game of thrones like red wedding when they just killed everybody <sighs> that like yeah no character is safe so oh, i mean it would be devastating but like i would cry we all like in some level this year everybody's got potential crosshairs on them everyone's gonna get the axe at some point yeah right yeah uh but i would love for dre to get the axe a little sooner if that could happen, if that could happen that's i usually just my little feel tidbit. like when a character want like they want a character to they die like keep it going yeah 
Okay. <laughs> well, um, Tommy, I think that, like I said, I think that he may be on to Teresi. Um, but are we going to see him kind of tap into a little bit more of an emotional side since this is his dad? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's an inevitability, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that um, it's going to be really interesting to see how, how Ghost navigates it, too, because Ghost has never really had, had had to have competition for Tommy's heart. Right. You know, when you really think of the show, like, the relationship that, that he has with Angela and that love for Angela is mirrored in his relationship with Tommy and that brotherly love for yeah, Tommy. Yeah, that bromance. Yeah. Oh, man. Well... I hope that he gets on to him sooner than later. I think you've got a crush on Tommy. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> you're like, no. no, he is one of my favorites. Yeah, outside, he's amazing. Outside of you, I do love you this season, maybe. Yeah, you know, it's you okay. Know, I, we've developed a love relationship. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I was talking about Dre. Um, is he in over his head? trying to go after ghosts because he really is like he was once his understudy he was taught by ghosts and now it seems like they are going head to head in a lot of ways i you know dre is definitely shooting for the moon and the wonderful thing about power is like one episode he'll have the upper hand and he thinks he's getting traction and the next episode he's like way down at the bottom yeah. again and um i don't i think as long as um ghost and kanan are alive uh, Dre is going to be kind of caught in the middle of like what his agenda is like he's because mm. he, he's the one who's he's the underdog yeah so yeah he's he is a hundred percent over his head but you know people still sometimes make those crazy you know three pointers or across the cord shots and it works out so that's he is definitely the wild card right there have been some crazy fan theories, and I obviously want to know what is the craziest that you've heard, but one is that Rashad Tate, um, I want to make sure I get this right, this fan theory, Rashad Tate can't be trusted, and it seems like he's trying to take down ghosts. Um, could he and Terry be um, working together? Oh, well, okay, so the, no, because the problem with Terry is Terry is, is a white hat. He is sort of truly incorruptible, mm -hmm. and so... Basically, I could see like Simon Stern and 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 uh, uh, Congressman Rashad working together, mm -hmm. but like in terms of what the characters stand for, you'd have to um, Terry's character would have to arc so completely. Like I, you can see him lying for Tasha, maybe for love, but there's limits to where to his in, what he's gonna um, sacrifice in terms of his integrity. Right. I think a lot of people that had those fan theories are probably thinking like, you know, Angela has done this for ghosts, so maybe Tasha's love interest would do the same, um, you know, to take down ghosts in a way for his love for Tasha. But you're right. But working it's a little with wild. Rasha, like Congressman Rasha, like that's like a that's on another level. Right. Yeah. What's been the wildest theory that you've heard so far? Oh, I think that Kanan being Tasha's baby daddy. Well, it's also just <laughs> illogical because, like, he was in prison. I mean, it was just, yeah, no, he's not Tasha's baby daddy. It is funny, though, when people have these, like, really crazy theories, and mm -hmm. it's like, wow, that's, like, really complicated. Like, the simpler, the simpler theories. The better. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of Tasha and Kanan, are we ever going to find out their uh, back history? Because it does seem like there's some... A uh, type of tension there that could have been a romantic past. Will they ever explain why Tasha's so upset? I think it gets touched on where like Kanan's got a lech for her, mm -hmm. and that's like when somebody that imposing like dresses like you know dresses you down with your eyes. Like that's a scary thing as a woman. There's no yeah. part of you that like, and she knows what he's capable of. He killed his own son, mm -hmm. and she also knows what she's guilty of. She knows that her and uh, Ghost set him up mm -hmm. to go to prison. So I think so that... So it sounds like a combination of guilt and just like Kanan is just the worst human. <laughs> well, and also knowing that he has legitimate beef and not trusting this truce because if someone did that to Tasha like, and sent her to prison for 10 years, I don't think... It, it's, it's a hard thing to... Like, she's smart to be like, I feel like he's playing you guys and he's going to turn on you. Right. Now, do you think, I know a lot of people were so upset with Tariq, including myself, in the beginning of the season. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, this entire thing has kind of been on him with Raina. But is he a little smarter than we think when it comes to his relationship with Kanan? No, he's a kid. <laughs> he's a kid. Simple. Like, that's, that's sort of where, it's like where, where it's, when you're, 
16, 17 years old, you have this all of this bravado that you think you've like figured everything out, but the truth is you you haven't, you don't. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, well, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, right. but no, he's a teenager. Right. And I'm so happy. Sorry. I'm so happy that Tommy actually spoke up finally. It was about time that he had that conversation with Tariq yeah. because he, he needs to stop. You know, the question is whether Tariq is sal like salvageable, savable mm. at this point, or if he's gone past the tipping point. I have a little hope for him on that, that part, but, you yeah. know, we'll see. Um, Jane from YouTube says, who's the biggest prankster on set, and do you guys have a text chain? Oh, no, we don't have a text chain. <laughs> um, I like to do pranks. Really? No, I mean, in terms of my world, maybe. I mean, I don't, we operate in really separate worlds. I think probably the most extra thing I've done was I left a Deer head and Joseph Shakura's dressing room with no comment, like no note. It was just sitting on the couch. <laughs> this random deer head. Yeah, Where like, did you even get the deer head from? Um, a friend was moving and she was like, hey, do you want it? I was like, this would be perfect. That would be the last <laughs> thing that I would think would be on um, a power set. <laughs> and then whenever a character dies, um, I may or may not have like a funeral pyre of flowers with the rest in peace like in like in their trailer oh my, a full shrine yeah <laughs> oh with like a eat your feelings snack box like oh you you're know. a real prankster what did you do for Raina when they uh killed Raina off well actually oh, I felt bad I did I because she was a I did, I've done it for like David Fumero yeah. for Andy Bean um for Lucy it makes more sense yeah, though you yeah. wouldn't want to prank a child no <laughs> yeah that was that's that's a different yeah but it's right. more of like you know and like I just got killed off. Here's some popcorn and chocolate. And <laughs> More in the dead. Yeah, oh yeah. my god. So it's it's it, but it's also because it's not. You know, you shoot the scene. You're all covered in blood, and you have to go back to your dressing room to undress. And it's nice to kind of poke fun and create a ritual of it. And right. you know, who doesn't want? It's really funny though, calling the florist because they think they're <laughs> delivering to a funeral home. Oh my god. And you're god. like, no. And then it's like rest in peace. Like. Um, Mike Sandoval's character, played by uh, David Fruvero, we, his nickname is Miguel Sandy Balls. So it was like, Did you give him this nickname? Maybe. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I love your sense of humor, though. Yeah. Uh, and most people We're wouldn't even expect that from from your character. It is a character, my friends. I'm very different <laughs> in the real of it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Matthew from YouTube says, "Hi. Which season of Power has been your favorite?" You know what? The first. Because it was new. We were like green little newbies. New York was new. None of us were used to this. It was just, it, there's nothing, sort of like, there's nothing like your first time. It was yeah. like, it was just, it was that first season was really lovely. Oh my gosh. I would agree, but season five is pretty amazing because we just have so many layers. Yeah. yeah. It's everything's like yeah. evolved. And, exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, one thing I'm noticing from the last episode, and a few um, few episodes, especially Raina's funeral, is that Tasha's mom may know best um, when it comes to her relationship with Terry. Now, is she turning a blind eye because she's in love, or could her mom be on to something? I think Tasha's mom is a lot like Paz, where when you stand on the outside of something, it becomes very clear and very evident, like, boo, what are you doing, right? <laughs> right. Um, but... That's the thing when it comes, like, Tasha's an adult, she's a mom in her own right, she's an individual, and what is her mom really going to do mm -hmm. besides give her, like, the side eye or, you know, that's like, true. tell her what's up? Or I think she slapped her in one episode. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, but that's sort of the extent of it. She can't. Well, it seems like her mom is so traditional, so I was thinking maybe she just values, you know, ma marriage is very sacred, so maybe that could be it. But then well, I'm thinking her, in terms of power. Her mom is also in on... The, the criminality of the cu couple and like she knows the risks like you know when you have a marriage that's also based on drug dealing like that's a really uh, dangerous thing to leave right especially when you're dating a lawyer mm -hmm. and not everybody is like Angela uh, in the scenario where she would actually fight on the other side well of... but also like Angela put Ghost in jail because she thought yeah. he murdered somebody so like Terry's in that same way the reason why Angela's working with them is because she accidentally got herself implicated mm -hmm. so it's her own survival system yeah kicking in if she was still on the other side of the law mm -hmm. I mean I don't know if she would be helping in the way that she's helping okay so so Angela still has some selfish motives in there still yeah well it's yeah it's because it's 
her fate is it, like if she goes down, everybody else goes down, and if someone else goes down, they all go down. It's like lap sitting, mm -hmm. but for jail. <laughs> so, <laughs> who's going know, next? Sorry. You know, it's like blaming her because it's a selfish motive. It's like, well, yeah, but I mean, everybody at this point is trying to save their own hide. So, right. Yeah. I want to play a quick, quick, rapid fire round called Power Play with you before okay. we get into our exclusive clip that we have for you guys for the next oh, episode. Yeah. So stay tuned. Uh, so who do you think is the biggest threat this season? Tommy, Tariq, Kanan, or Teresi? Ooh, I think Teresi. Mm, okay. I mean, I can see that. Which character arcs will surprise us the most this season? All of them. Um... <laughs> if you could choose one. Ooh. Tasha. Tasha. Okay. Maybe I'm lying. I hope you're not. <laughs> Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. Okay, are we in for any major deaths by the end of the season? Like from a major Always, character? it's power. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, I don't want that. Tariq has been uh, the most hated character. Oh, we talked about this. If he's smarter, um, running with Kanan, you said he's a kid. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and show you guys an exclusive clip of episode six. So go ahead and take a look. You know, Andy, you just keep showing up for me. For me, not my family. But everything has happened. Why is that? I don't know. Did you just come over here last night because Tasha kicked you out? No. I came over because I owed you an apology. I owed you the truth. And that's the truth? About when you said it was the right decision to end things between us. That's the truth. That night almost killed me. Me too. of emotions in this clip. oh yeah. my goodness the last thing that you say in uh in this clip is that can you trust ghosts uh can you trust him with your heart anymore i think that's what angela is asking because it's also in that clip he um he tells her why he broke up with her he tells her the truth of it and 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 so it's that it's sort of like well is he is this honesty going to continue, Can you know? Mm -hmm. um, so she's still in the question of it. Question I have, it seems like that's the morning after. So in the season... Uh, in is it the morning? I think it's that night. Okay, so we pick up right where we left off um, yeah. at the end Power of season Power loves to five. do that. Like, okay, <laughs> just want to yeah. make sure. I was like, yeah, what yeah, yeah. happened? Yeah. Um, okay, so we don't know yet if... if uh, Angela can trust ghosts with her heart. Um, but what kind of conversation are we going to have? Uh, go, I know we had an intense one there, but could we see a friendship or is this going to be completely yeah, I cut think, off? I think like right now there it's like, okay, you're being honest. Let me be honest. And who are we now? Mm -hmm. You know, Raina's death really leveled the playing field. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it's ever happened to you where, you're mad at someone and then some life thing happens and all of a sudden uh, it just that stuff doesn't really matter exactly. as much anymore. Um, the piece though is, you know, Angela, he doesn't know that she's working with Tasha. Oh, okay, obviously, yeah, we, yeah we're still watching as pow a power audience. Yeah, okay. and so like, and he, she's been leaving him out of stuff because he's been clearly a little like, in crazy town He's like rock bottom yeah. yeah and so it's also interesting with Angela when she's asking him like can I trust you she's also like he's frayed at the edges so like he's not really in a reliable stable place either mm, mm, mm. now um, I want to talk about the fact that um, you guys have had such a journey with each other and it almost seems like Angela is a drug for ghost uh, will we see him break old habits, or is this something that will expose that they really are true loves? Um, 
I think that's really interesting because they they've been true loves from the beginning. Uh, if if Angela's a drug for ghosts, he's equally a drug for her. Um, they imprinted on each other at such mm -hmm. a young age, and that's sort of been the core of power. Is like they have a love for each other in like big capital letters, and they have a love that exists outside the bounds of morality. Mm -hmm. and like, what do you do with that, right? Like Courtney sets up this wonderful conflict of you know, here's this huge epic love and he's married with kids and what do you, how do you navigate that? Right. Um, and Things are a little different now though because his marriage is on the yeah, rocks that's and the, Tasha's, you know, kicked him out. Yeah. So that could change possibly. I would, I would say like his marriage isn't even on the rock. Like his marriage, like they've both put that to bed. Uh, I would, you know, um, Tasha's moved on with Terry and and she's kind of discovering a new side of herself as well. Um, so, I mean, let's hope so. <laughs> I, know. I think you know. I th it's a, it's the 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 ghost and Angela relationship is a really like kind of powerful love story between two people that we don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see it on TV, but sometimes I don't know. I feel like they have they had a. It works in a special way in power. We haven't seen it. Well, you know what? When you said imprint, I instantly thought of Twilight <laughs> and how they imprint it on one another. Oh, yeah. But we've never seen it in this context of, like, you know, crime and the the power realm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it is sort of like they're like star-crossed lovers. It's like, yeah. you know, go, uh, Romeo and Juliet, they're on opposing sides. They and they're can't not supposed have to, each yeah. other. Yeah. You know, and um, <sighs> but they, they fell in love, like, at that simpler time before life dictated which direction they're going to go. Right. So we'll see what direction they go in after yeah. this clip. Okay, so Solomon wants to know from YouTube, the women of power don't really get their hands too dirty. Kanan, Ghost, and Tommy are serial killers. Who do you think will be the first woman to cross that line? Well, it's interesting because Angela gets, um, she gets uh, Mike Sandoval killed. Um... <laughs> Interesting. Who do you think, like, to do it physically with their hands? I mean, get their hands dirty, yeah. So someone Ooh. that's going to... I would say Tasha. I can see that. And you said she has a journey ahead, so we'll see yeah. what Tasha's capable of. Anna from YouTube says, I love your sister Paz on Power and Orange is the New Black. Is she coming yeah. back this season? Is Paz coming back this season? Oh, my goodness, I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, she's still in Angela's world. She'll be back next season. Okay. I know that, but um, I don't actually. I think she's not coming back this season, but it's not. It's because like Elizabeth Rodriguez is an amazing actress, and we have to juggle her schedule and all of these other things. So yeah, she's constantly booked. I right? think she may, but I'm not. I'm not sure. I I apologize. I don't remember. Oh no, it's okay. Well, hopefully we see her. Okay. Uh, Claudio, Claudia from YouTube says, will we see you in any other show or movie anytime soon? I, I hope so. Noise. I mean, I not as of late, but fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I get to play another character at some point in right. time and, you know, not have to move back in with my parents. You keep saying that, but come on. I mean, being a series reg regular as Angela, this you're is a set. fickle industry. Aww. We can't, you know, you can never rest on your laurels. You don't know. No, I fingers crossed. That. Fingers crossed for her. We're putting that out there. She's gonna get something great. Um, speaking of, oh yeah, okay. So Gary Lennon, mm. he is going to be the co-showrunner for season six. Gary is amazing. Yeah. What yeah. kind of unique spin do you think he's gonna bring to uh, power? Well, Carrie's actually been there, like, from season two. And so it's not so much that he's going to bring, like, a unique spin other than he's just, you know, getting to, ha like, be um, kind of, like, m like, actually make sort of decisions um, in tandem with Courtney and, like, going through. And it's, it's um, he, Gary is a native New Yorker. He's, you know, comes from the street and has an incredible journey of um, really like coming from um, very difficult conditions and making an incredible life for himself. Mm -hmm. um, he's uh, responsible for a lot of uh, Tommy's character and he, he is a wonderful yeah. writer and so I think he's just gonna continue with great storytelling. Right, you know? because he has that backstory and yeah. he can relate. Yeah. That's always great yeah. with writers, right? <laughs> 
Now, uh, uh, one thing that everyone uh, feels when they watch a show like this, and I know that we're like rooted in crime, but are you guys close, like off screen? Like what's that relationship like? Are you friends? Oh yeah, we're definitely a family. Cause a lot of it too is we all started, this was all of our first big show. I mean, Omari had had, um, y you know, work before, but this was his first time leading the helm. And the interesting thing though, is when we're shooting, we only gotta get to see the characters that we work with, and then the off season, where we get to see each other the most is like press. But we'll right. get together and I'll have, you know, um, dinner and all of that, but also as everybody's gotten fancier, like everyone's <laughs> always like jet setting off here and there. And so, right. you know, in the beginning when nobody knew us, then we could hang out a lot more because we didn't have a lot of stuff going right, on. Right, and now it's like all the lights yeah, and camera. Yeah, they're like, oh, I'm in this place, and oh, I'm in doing this, and oh, you know, and you're like, awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I know uh, Tasha's character, um, Naturi. Naturi, yeah. So Naturi's daughter just celebrated her first yeah. birthday. Did anyone go or did you send Sorry. a gift to her? Um, oh, God, no, I didn't send Oh, I'm gift putting her. you in the hot seat. <laughs> yeah, you totally put me in the hot seat. It was so cute. Um, yeah, it was, I think, mid-July, and um, I was not in New York, and I think okay. she had it in Brooklyn. Right, but, but it's a, uh, yeah. schedules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, like, I had, yeah, I need to get her. I do. I'm a bad castmate. No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm sure she understands. Okay, so um, obviously we've covered a lot of ground with the characters, but what do you think is going to be the most surprising thing that we see in episode six? Like, what do, not any spoilers, but just like the journey ahead. Oh, God. So you're, all of the episodes are mush in my brain. <laughs> this seems like it's going to be a heavy uh, Ghost and Angela episode, episode six. Um, yeah, it will be, except I will tease that, um, Angela's working with Tasha to She's handle stuff. So it. it's going to be how much does she let Ghost in on their strategy or, or how much is Ghost sort of compromised with his grief and his sort of instability that they're like, mm, maybe not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are you kind of going to be that balancing, um, Thing I mean, for wouldn't them it again? be funny if I was like <laughs> juggling their marriage? Yeah, you of, right, of all people. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have a lot of exciting things ahead, and I'm glad that we got to got to cover some ground here. I am really excited for episode six, so we're in for a good one, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always. It's gonna keep getting better. By the end of the season, you know, people are gonna be like on the floor with fans. We're invested in. We we want Kendrick <laughs> back. That's what we really want. I mean, who doesn't? I know. Incredible talent. He's really great. Well, thank you guys so much. I hope we answered most of your questions. If you have any more, go ahead and tweet um, her on her social media. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our Facebook, YouTube, and we'll see you guys for the next ET Live. Thanks, guys.